Joining me from Capitol Hill is Senator Judd Gregg, a Republican from New Hampshire, one of seven Republicans who voted for Kagan's nomination for Solicitor General last year. Senator, how does that vote now influence the support you may give um, Elena Kagan in her uh, nomination to be the Supreme Court Justice? Uh, very little, actually, Contessa. My view uh, on positions like Solicitor General or Cabinet Secretaries is that the President should be able to surround himself with the people he wants in his administration. Uh, rarely do I vote against nominees uh, for positions that are going into the administration unless I find their views to be really uh, inappropriate at some level. Uh, and so I, um, I vote for most nominees for administrations because I think the President has a right to pick his own team. Uh, the Supreme Court, of course, is entirely different. The Supreme Court is the most important nomination process which we confront as a Senate. It's our very significant constitutional responsibility of the Senate to make sure the people who go on the Supreme Court uh, meet the standards which we have as a nation for members of the Supreme Court, which is that they must be very thoughtful, intelligent, capable people who are going to be fair dispensers of justice in their nation. Senator Greg, I want to ask you about a vote that the Senate just made, voting 96 to nothing to audit the Federal Reserve. Um, they want to get more details about who received trillions of dollars from the Fed's emergency aid program. Um, but you've been called, in fact, the Huffington Post called you one of the most outspoken defenders of the Fed. Uh, a few months ago, you did not uh, want a Fed audit. You attacked it as pandering populism. Why did you change your mind? Well, I didn't, actually. Uh, that audit, which I voted for this time, was worked out after a fair amount of negotiations between Senator Sanders and, and the Fed. I, I congratulate Senator Sanders for being very constructive on this issue. But what I oppose and continue to oppose and did oppose, and it was the next vote actually, the Vitter vote, which lost, which I strongly opposed, uh, was to allow the Congress to step into trying to audit monetary policy. because. The strength of our dollar depends on the independence of the Fed. We do not want the political winds of the day or the politics of the day to influence how much money is printed in this country. And that's why we set up the Federal Reserve back in 1917, so there would be an independent organization that actually prints our money, uh, not the Congress of the United States. Because if you turn the printing presses over to the Congress of the United States, it would be a disaster. Uh, so we have, all, we have had a law in the books for a long time that said in the area of producing money, which is what's called right. the open market activities, uh, the Congress does not have the right to audit that activity because audit is a weapon the Congress uses to influence things. And so that law continues. But they, the, but they have so much power over the, the global economy, over the nation's economy because of their influence on, on currency. That shouldn't we? Shouldn't some of their secretive actions at least see the light of day? Well, that's basically what the Sanders Amendment did. It expanded the audit activity. The Fed is already audited aggressively in almost all its accounts, but they've opened up to even further disclosure here, and they're going to put it on the web and all these different loans which were made as a result of the attempt to stabilize the financial industry. I, I have no problem with that. Support that. Yeah. Uh, but I do not want to see the Congress trying to influence how we how we print money in this country. I, I can't think of anything worse for the average American than to have the Congress deciding the value of the dollar because basically we would have a very inflationary economy because members of Congress would want to spend money on this and that and they'd print money to do it. And, and, we, and when you take that dollar downtown to buy something, you know, to buy you know, your groceries or to buy a car. We want it to mean your, something. Yeah, you want it to mean something. Yeah. And when you put it in a savings bank, you, when you take it out, you want it to mean something. Yeah. So you want to have the, the defense of the dollar is critical and you do not want the politics of the day to influence how much money is printed, well, listen, and I, that's why independent of the defense is, Fed is critical in this specific area. I appreciate you explaining your uh, reasoning on that. Thanks a lot for coming on. No problem. Thank you, Contessa. Let's get a check on Wall Street.